Hey guys, welcome back to The Curly Reader. My name's Amanda and today I want to share with you some middle grade March recommendations. All right, so middle grade March is swiftly approaching and I'm so excited to be co-hosting middle grade March this year with Krista from Books and Jams and Katie at Life Between Words. Um, if you are unaware, middle grade March is a month long readathon where we focus on reading middle grade. So there is no requirement. You just have to read one middle grade throughout the month and you have participated. However, to make it a little bit more interesting, we have come up with five different challenges to help you expand your middle grade reading experience. So today I'm going to be sharing with you some recommendations for each of those challenges. So this does not include our group book, which I have around here somewhere, which is the Brave by James Byrd. Um, this is going to be our group book. We're so excited. You can find more details about this as well as the group read and some other fun middle grade March um, information in our announcement video, which I will link down below in the description box. So outside of our group book, our other five challenges, I'm going to give you four recommendations at least for each challenge. So let's just get into it. All right, the first challenge is to read a book with a silhouette on the cover. So I would be remiss to not recommend you read one of my favorite books of 2020, and that is Everything Else in the Universe by Tracy Holzer. This does have a silhouette on the cover. This is a middle grade historical fiction that takes place during the Vietnam War and follows our main character, Lucia, who um, her father is a doctor, he's a surgeon, and he is called up for medical draft and is drafted to Vietnam and comes home missing an arm. And it is about her processing that as well as making a friend and um, just kind of their experience. This book deals a lot with the political climate in the United States during the Vietnam War, specifically that of the attitude of like World War II veterans, um, towards the Vietnam veterans and how awful they treated these men and it was a very eye-opening and a wonderful reading experience. The writing is fantastic. Um, Lucia and her friend have such a wonderful relationship and yeah I absolutely loved that book so that is my first pick. Um, my next recommendation is Wolf Hollow by Lauren Woke. I also read this in 2020 and I absolutely loved it. Um, this takes place, I believe, also during World War II. I always thought it was between World War I and World War II, but I think it is during World War II. Um, and it follows Annabelle. Um, she lives in Pennsylvania in this kind of small, quiet town. And one day a bully moves in and this bully starts targeting this World War I vet who just kind of roams the town. He's homeless um, and she really starts targeting this man and making life very difficult for him. And so Annabelle decides to stand up for him and it is beautifully written. Um, really, really great book. And so this also has a silhouette on the cover. All right. Number three for a silhouette on the cover is Chains by Lori Hulse Anderson. I'm just noticing now that all of my recommendations for silhouette on the cover are historical fiction. So yeah, <laughs> there's that. But Lori Hulse Anderson wrote Chains. This is about the Revolutionary War and follows, um, I don't remember what the main character's name was now. Um, but it follows um, our main character who is a slave and becomes a spy in the revolution. So there is that. And then the last one that I wanted to mention for this prompt is Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan. This is one of my all time favorite historical, well, this is one of my all time favorite middle grade books ever. If you're gonna read this, pick up the audiobook. you will not. Be disappointed but this book follows a magical harmonica through the lives of three different children and so this has three different kind of stories in it one is the story of a boy living in germany 
right at the start of the um, of World War II. Another one takes place in New England in the 1940s, and the other one takes place on the west coast of the United States in California, I believe, um, also in the late 40s, I believe. So, um, and the harmonica kind of ties these three stories together. It is so well done. It is so beautiful. Highly, highly, highly recommend this one for a book with a silhouette on the cover. All right, the next prompt is to read a book featuring a journey or an adventure. So for this, I would like to recommend Becoming Naomi Leon by Pam Munoz Ryan. I read this last year during middle grade March and loved it. Um, this is about our main character, Naomi Leon, who lives with her grandmother um, and goes on an adventure to Mexico to find her father. So that is what that is about. And it is so good. Um, another one that features in a journey is Bud Not Buddy by Christopher Paul Curtis. This follows Bud, who is looking for his father as well and is train hopping. It's set in the 1930s in Michigan. And so he is kind of, it's during the Great Depression. There's talk of like the shanty towns and things like that in here. Um, but he is just kind of on the run and trying to find his father. Um, another one that features a journey is The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. Um, this is about a girl who longs for adventure and she's invited to fairyland by a green wind and a leopard. Um, and so fairyland is in turmoil and it will take one 12 year old girl, a book loving dragon and a strange and almost human boy named Saturday to vanquish an evil Marquess and restore order. Not since Oz has there been a land or a cast of characters so rich and entrancing. That's what the back of the book says. So this would also feature a journey. And then the last one I have here is actually a graphic novel. And that is, this was our pact by Ryan Andrews. This is about a group of kids who um, every fall, I think it's the autumn equinox, their town has a paper lantern like ceremony where they put paper lanterns in the river and watch them float off onto the horizon. And one year this boy and his friends decide that they are going to follow the lanterns as far as they can and they meet all these magical creatures and it is fantastical. Um, it's just, I, I love this one. So that is another one. Next we have um, books that feature a strong family element as part of the story. And so for this, I wanna recommend The Great Gilly Hopkins by Katherine Patterson. This is a book that is about foster care and it is one of the best books that I have read about foster care. Um, and it is very short, but it is very impactful and very well done. It follows an 11 year old Gilly Hopkins who goes to live with this foster family and um, learns that you don't always get things the way you want them, pretty much. So that's that one. Um, one that I read in 2020 that I absolutely loved that features a strong family is Caterpillar Summer by Gillian McDunn. This is one about Cat, who um, her younger brother is called Chicken, and he has autism, and she has always really helped take care of him. Her father has passed away, and so it's just her mom and the two kids, and so she's really had to grow up fast and taken on a lot of responsibility. And then one summer she goes to stay with her grandparents who she's never met before and gets to learn what it's like to be a kid again. And so it's about her and her relationship with her brother and her relationship with her mom, but also her relationship with her grandparents. And it is really good. So that was one that I adored from 2020. All right, another one that I read in 2020 that I absolutely loved is Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson. This is one, it follows Amari, Amara, Amara, who wants to go to New York City with her dad. And so I think she lives on the West Coast, um, but her dad is from New York City and so she wants to go visit New York City. And through her time spent there, she learns a lot about her father's relationship with his father, but also a lot of the black history in New York City and what it means and what it means for her. And it's really, really well done. Highly recommend. Renee Watson is a fantastic author. 
All right. And then another one that features a found family is Counting by Sevens by Holly Goldberg Sloan. And this one follows Willow, who is orphaned. And then she also is very, very high functioning, like can get a perfect on any standardized test. And doesn't really, people at school don't really know how to react to her. Um, and it's, a lot about just her found family. It's so well done. I love this one on audio. The narrator really encompasses Willow's personality very, very well. I actually wouldn't mind rereading this one because I've forgotten a lot about it, but it was so good. And I just remember adoring it. This is one that made me cry. I love it. And yeah, I love the found family element of that one. All right, moving on. The next prompt is to read a retelling. So this does not have to be a fairy tale retelling. It can be a retelling of a classic. It can be a retelling of a myth or a legend, um, anything like that. And so for this one, the first one I rec want to recommend is The Sisters Grimm um, by Michael Buckley. This is the first one in a series. Um, and this is a retelling of Grimm's fairy tales. It's basically these two girls who they realize that they are ancestors of the Brothers Grimm. And so the girls have to take on the family responsibility of being fairy tale detectives. So that would be a fun one. Another fairy tale retelling that I loved is Mighty Jack by Ben Hatkey. This is a graphic novel um, retelling of Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, and so this one's a lot of fun. It's very different. And um, yeah, I really like this one. So that would be a fun one. Um, one that I found in doing my research for this that really piqued my interest that might get added to my own TBR actually because I just think that this premise is fascinating is The Twelve by Cindy Lynn. This is a retelling of the Zodiac, um, the Chinese Zodiac to be specific. And so it basically it says to save her sister she must fulfill her destiny. So this says, Usagi's breath was so shallow that she was dizzy. A priestess with the power of a tiger, um, the library sticker is over that word, so I don't know, manifested right here before her. It was impossible to deny the truth of what the three bandits, no heirs, had been saying all along. The twelve had not completed, had not completely been wiped out. A warrior still lived. Those with zodiac powers were not alone after all. So it's about basically the year you were born in, you get powers from that zodiac, zodiac sign. And it just sounds so fun. Like that one sounded really interesting to me. Another one um, that would fit the retelling uh, prompt is The Real Boy by Anne Ursu. I read Bread Breadcrumbs by Anne Ursu and I really liked her writing style. I wasn't a huge fan of bread the second half of Breadcrumbs, but I still really like the writing style. And this is a retelling of Pinocchio. Um, so that sounded like a ton of fun and it's a modern retelling. So yeah, check this one out if you're looking for a retelling. All right. And then the last prompt is to read a book published in the decade in which you were born. And so for this, for recommendations, I decided to go through and I'm going to recommend one book from each decade starting in the 1950s and going all the way through the 2010s. So let's do this. <laughs> Ready? So for 1950, I am recommending The Borrowers by Mary Norton. This has to do with these tiny little people who live in the walls of your house and they borrow things from you as they need them and then return them. So that is a classic that is so much fun. Um, published in the 1960s, I am recommending A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lingle. Um, this is a classic sci-fi um, that basically follows three kids, two kids, as they are searching for their father who has gone missing. And so, yeah, there's a wrinkle in time. Um, for the 1970s, I am recommending A Bridge to Terabithia by Katherine Patterson. I adore this book so much. Um, so this follows Jess Aarons, who he befriends this girl at school and they create Terabithia in the woods and it is their fantastical land and it just follows the two of them and then tragedy strikes and it's about that and it's it's so good and it's really really short so definitely a fantastic read if you were born in the 1970s if you were born in the 1980s 
I highly, highly recommend you read Matilda by Roald Dahl. This is one of my all-time favorite middle grade books. I adore this book. This follows Matilda, who is a very, very gifted student. And because she's been very stifled most of her life, she, her um, creative juices start eking out in other ways. Um, and she begins to have um, telekinetic powers and her parents are horrible and her teacher is wonderful and it is so good. Definitely read Matilda if you were born in the 80s. If you were born in the 1990s, I recommend you read The Birmingham's Go The Watsons Go to Birmingham, 1963 by Christopher Paul Curtis. This follows the Watsons as they travel from Flint, Michigan to Birmingham, Alabama in 1963 and just kind of the racial issues that they deal with along the way. If you were born in the 2000s, I recommend you read Artemis Fowl by Owen Colfer. This is a fantastic fantasy book that follows Artemis Fowl, who is a, a mastermind villain kid who is trying to steal gold from leprechauns. And it sounds really cheesy, but it's not. It is fantastic. Um, it's full of fairies and leprechauns and all, but not in a way that you would think. It's wonderful. I love this book. Go check that one out. And then if you were born in the 2010s, I recommend you read the Lions of Little Rock by Kristen Levine. This one is one that I had my daughter read. I read it with her and it is a wonderful book that covers the desegregation of schools in Arkansas. Little Rock, Little Rock, obviously. Little Rock, Arkansas in 1958 and it provided a ton of great discussion and it was full of great life lessons and I strongly encourage any young ones that were born in the 2010s to pick this one up and read this one. So those are all of my recommendations for middle grade March for the different prompts for this year. Um, I will have my TBR coming out next week full of all the books that I plan on reading for middle grade March. And I cannot wait because it's going to be so much fun. So if you have read any of the books that I suggested or talked about today, I would love to hear your comments about them down below. If you have recommendations for middle grade March, please leave those down below as well, because I know um, others will be looking for even more recommendations. Also, Krista and Katie have also put out recommendations videos today. So I will link those videos down below in the description. Go check those out for even more. And let's just get this middle grade recommendation train rolling. It's going to be so much fun. I cannot wait to see what everybody's going to be reading for March. It's my favorite time of year. So yeah, that's going to do it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And until next time, see ya. Thank you.